Today I'm going to talk about what makes a great portrait sketch. Then a student named Christopher C. sent in this sketch for critique. First we have Casey Baugh, an amazing modern day artist. So with this sketch, you can see that he uses a lot of uh, texture and abstract shapes for the background and lets part of the portrait just kind of emerge out of that. And with this one, he just left so much to the imagination. I mean, there's just a little bit of detail in that center area of the face and then everything else is just left to the imagination so much mystery and look at the texture right here in the lower part near the jaw i mean that's so interesting it's just unusual to see that kind of texture and the, the way that he uses the pencil marks is just perfectly done he lets the lost and found edges make this beautiful portrait work he doesn't have to explain every single detail next we have western artist john coleman the braided hair is the star of the show here, and he just let the portrait be secondary to that beautiful shape, that dark shape in the middle and everything else surrounding it. Notice, no background needed. He's really letting the pencil marks be the star of the show, and that also helps highlight the rugged uh, skin texture of this Indian face and the texture of the feathers and the jewelry surrounding him. Again, not much of a background needed. And look how the edges of the portrait of her hair and her face are very lightly done and just softly melt into that background. No hard edges along the outer port of this portrait. The hardest edges are inside, deep inside the portrait plane, the, the eye and that edge of the hair. And then it just works perfectly as it softens up and just fades into nothing. And looking to an old master, we have John Singer Sargent. Who else, of course? A lot like Casey Baugh, I really see a lot of mystery here. Every single um, feature in the face isn't explained in full detail. The edges are softened and hard as needed. Look how the hair is made up of masses of shape, not individual hair marks. Again, look at all the mystery. You can hardly see the detail in his eyes. And look how simply the clothing is uh, sketched out here and the shapes of the hair. No individual hairs are drawn. And look how he stayed consistent with the shadow on the left side of the face, the neck, and even into the clothing. When you're doing a portrait of a woman, you want to keep her features soft. Notice here how Sargent has no hard lines um, detailing the shape of her eyes, the shape of her nose, the shape of her mouth. All those features are done with lost and found edges. Look how simply that hand is denoted and there's only a couple of uh, pencil strokes to denote that she's got clothing on. Notice the light value of the clothing. This keeps the vocal point up in the eyes and in that head area. Nothing is distracting away from the vocal point of the portrait. I'm going to use this sergeant sketch as a guide for the critique of Christopher's portrait sketch. Okay, so I'm going to just put in some of the edits that I see initially that could help your sketch Christopher become a little bit more masterful. And we've got the sergeant sketch pulled up here on the left as sort of a guide to where we would want to develop this sketch to the degree of a finished portrait sketch. When you're just learning, it's a really good idea to let the masters that have come before give you the answers, show you the way, show you how a portrait sketch should look when it's finished. One thing that you could try doing is a master copy of this sergeant sketch. And I chose it because it reminds me a bit of your composition, kind of the lighting uh, situation just reversed on yours. And uh, we're gonna make it look as if the light is hitting her on this left side of her face. Rembrandt type shadow will be coming in on the right side of her face. So the first thing that I wanna do is work on the eyes. So the eyes are the vocal point of your portrait sketch here, Christopher. And what you, have done is you've used the same hard 
dark line for each part of the eye pretty much. And if you could come over here to Sargent's and you look, you see he's got this soft, very light uh, underneath lower lash line happening. And, and right here towards the inner corner of the eye, it's almost non-existent. It's just letting it be very, very light. And there's some darkness to the white of the eye. The whites of the eyes are never white. So you want to make sure you shade those because as the light's hitting the eyelids, giving you a little bit of a shadow on that white of the eye and across the pupil and iris. So we want to put that in. What I'm going to do is make your lower lash line lighter. Let's see if we, I'm not going to erase it. I'm just going to use a light colored pencil to kind of take some of this away. Now I'm putting this on an upper layer so we can turn it on and off and see back and forth how we're doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and take away, you don't wanna have individual eyelashes like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit of an upper eyelid. This point seems a little extended, so let's just soften that up a little. Do that for this eye as well. And we're just softening up that inner corner area. Now I don't see your reference photo here, so I can't really talk to uh, whether or not your anatomy is off or not. So we're just gonna go with what you've got here anatomy wise and drawing wise. So we've softened up the eye there. I'm just going to take a little bit of that darkness out of the lower part of the iris. And what I like to see happen is that the lashes don't really have individual lashes. They're just, as Sargent has shown here, a thick upper line with maybe a little bit of an individual lash towards the outer corner there. I'm thickening the line along the upper part of the iris. It's gonna help us denote our shadow. Just getting rid of the white of the eye. It's a little bit too white. Your pupils seem a little bit large, but I'm not gonna change that very much. And I wanna get a little bit darker here in the corner just to denote that it's a round object happening in the eyes there. Just a little shadow below that lash line. So you don't want hard edges. You want the edges of the iris to have a little bit of softness to them. Making the size of your highlight a little bit smaller. So we haven't lost the intensity that you started with that with the eye. We just made it so that there's a little bit more form happening in the eye. So then the next thing I see is there needs to be a little bit of a shadow underneath the eye. I see you started to put a little bit of that here. So I'm just going to add to it. So let's establish our light and shadows. So we've got the light coming from here on the left side and above. So we're going to have some shadow along the side of the nose and underneath slightly. And then some more shadow along the side of the face here. Pretty much the reverse of what we see happening with the sergeant. Now the other thing that that's gonna do is take us to having some of this darker background. Since this is the more of the shadow side, we'll put in some nice darkness here so we can lose a little bit of that hard edge. The other thing I see with Sargent's hair is he's not showing each individual strand of hair, which I'm kind of seeing here with yours, Christopher. It's a little bit, I see a lot of individual hair marks. So let's just soften that up a little bit. And where the hair meets the forehead, you don't want to have harsh, solid lines there either. You want to let that kind of soften up and thinking about how the light's hitting and it's creating a little bit of a shadow there. Maybe she's got a little bit of a part coming in here and then this would be moving away from the light and then the hair bends and comes towards the light. See how we're using large strokes. We're just suggesting some of the shape of the hair. So we're on the light side of the face now. So even though it's dark hair, it's still gonna get a little bit lighter. 
and it moves under here away from the light and it looks like you've got a little bit of her ear showing so we'll keep that happening get a little bit of a lost edge happening there so that's the idea of that. This value in the ear, it's going to be a little darker because it's in the shadow that's been created by the hair because the light's from above. I would let a mid-value gray make up the side of her neck. You don't need to have that harsh line happening there. Just like Sargent did, I like to get a little bit darker coming down. So you want the background to not be so separate from your subject. So we're going to let it encompass some of this clothing that we've got here. Same sort of value. And there could be some highlights that come in to play there. Suggest a little bit of that clothing. It doesn't have to be in very much detail. And so the light would be hitting her shoulder. Let's make a little bit of a highlight here. So there we've got a little bit of the clothing worked in. I'm going to assume her top is white. However, that doesn't mean it won't have some values. Put a little of that in. We'll come back for our necklace. So look at the way Sargent's denoted this necklace. He hasn't drawn in every little detail to it. Let's see if we can't do the same. So you know the light would be hitting it here. Use what you have and just denote a little bit of it like that. So just to make it look like it's glistening, we'll just do a little bit of the chain. Now if you're drawing, you may be having to erase to put in your highlights. Now you've got all this lace here. Again, you just want to let some of those details go. Like the light would probably be hitting about here, so maybe there wouldn't be so much detail underneath it, or the light is in shadow. A little bit more of that lace detail. You just don't want it all the same value. You want to vary the value. It's the light side of the dress, so we're just going to make a little highlight there. All right, back to the face, a little more shadow on our cheek as it moves away from the light here and we lose that harsh line for the jaw you don't want to have such a harsh line so since the lights coming from above on the left just like in sergeants it's going to create this shadow under the neck so the thing that's happening with her mouth is you've drawn the mouth too harshly what you don't want to do is have so much of the line, especially where the lip skin meets the face. Just want to suggest the roundness and fullness of that bottom lip. And it's going to create a little bit of a shadow under here, which is giving us that bottom lip line. Upper lip, so the light's hitting here, it's not going to be having such a harsh line, even if she has lipstick on. Just want to soften it. And if you like, you can put a little highlight on that bottom lip. There's shadow happening here. Puts the bottom part of her nose in shadow. And typically you don't want your nostrils to be super, whoops, super duper dark. I'm not great with the uh, <laughs> Wacom tablet and the Photoshop drawing, but I hope you're getting the gist of it. And then the eyebrows. They're, they can be dark like that, but they just need to be a little more, like you don't want to see the individual hairs. The underneath part of the eyebrow will be dark, while these hairs in the light are a little bit lighter. Underneath, a bit of a shadow. Now what I want to do is just put some shadow on this area. So looking at Sargent's example, I can make this ear a little bit lighter. So I'm going to just lighten this up here and in the inner part of the eye. So we're keeping kind of in with the sergeant with how that lighting's coming into play. So I think that will give you the idea of a direction that you can take a portrait like yours into by softening the edges, not 
drawing everything with the same dark outline, letting some edges get lost, letting some details come forward, not explaining every little part of the drawing. Let some of it have mystery while other is um, out with all the full detail. So Christopher, I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me and we can uh, discuss it further. And that is your critique. So here it is turned off and here it is back on. So you can see where you started Christopher and perhaps where you would like to uh, end up. Hey artist, today I'm sharing with you my secret weapon to becoming a better artist and it's quick pose sketching. Yep, that's it. If you're not familiar with quick pose sketching, it is a 60 second sketch focusing on getting down the gesture or movement of the pose, no details, and very loose. They are not intended to be works of art. This is something I like to do every morning before I move on to working on more formal paintings. This is part of being an artist, just as practicing scales is part of being a professional musician. At quickpose.com, you'll find a variety of poses to practice from. You can go in and you can set up if you want to do a full figure or just a face. You can choose your gender. You can select both genders. They even have a clothing or partially clothed nude option. And then in the interval section, you can choose how long you want the pose to last. So you could start off perhaps with a 60 second pose and then move to longer poses. They even have a custom interval setting that you can put in there. And then you choose how many poses you wanna do. You wanna do 10 poses, 20 poses or more. You have that option to choose from. So then just hit start and then the poses begin. So in conclusion, remember, when drawing a portrait sketch, let mystery play into it. Include lost and found edges and texture. Remember, hair is portrayed in masses. Let the background melt into the portrait or vice versa. Be creative and look to those that do it well for guidance. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next one.